And he showed the work to these guys in physics lab there, and they looked at it and go, where did you get this work? And it's in personal handwriting. Where did you get Hawking's work? And they go, it's not Hawking's. It's this kid out here in Ohio in the cow fields launching rockets. So they look at this, and they go, holy smokes. So they photocopy it. There's no email, no faxes. They put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it, and mail it. And it goes to Cambridge, England. In three weeks, there's a man at Ohio State that my science teacher takes me to meet, and he's working on some projects with a thing called Battelle Memorial. And I walk into the room, and there's this enormous calculation. We had big blackboards, big as this room, matching, going all the way around the room. So I walk in, I see all these calculations. The first thing I go is, who's got my work and messing with it, you know? <laughs> this little guy on a cane stands up, and he goes, your work indeed. I go, yeah. And I went, wait a minute. That's not my work. Besides, it's not right over there anyhow. <laughs> he goes, really? You want to show me? Sure. Walk over there. <laughs> okay. Wait, wait. So anyway, write this stuff out. They look at it. He looks at it. And he goes, how do you qualify that? I go, rocket engine. And he goes, and he's looking at the connecting math I made because what's interesting about his mathematics and mine we're on parallel roads. He wants the theorems on all the black holes to show physically in physics how the mathematical equations can sh such a thing can exist. I'm a little bit beyond that. I just want a physical one built, 3D reality right here, and want to punch a hole in one end and let the, and let the power out. And he's going, oh, man. So he's working on his stuff, and he asks, where are you getting all these ant equations from? And I went, oh, boy, here we go. I went, um, dreams every night and he drops the chalk <laughs> and I'm standing there going <laughs> that's the end of this conversation I guess I'm out of here so he turned around and I'm already walking to the door and he goes wait a minute wait a minute he goes everything I get in my math comes from dreams we dream on the same wavelength therefore your brothers have a seat and we start working so the equations we could only come to because of the algorithms, still we didn't have the computer power that we needed. Um, we could get the field to hold for five seconds. Let me tell you all, five seconds with a rocket engine is an eternity. That's plenty of time. So I left there and I went back to do some more testing. Now let me tell you about my test area. What are you all laughing about? So. Well, yeah, see, I'm out of the backyard, very, very observant. And not only am I out of the backyard, my lunch site, and now me and my lab has been moved about 1,000 yards away for blast reasons. I'm waiting for my dad to start building a big wall there for shrapnel debris when it goes off. But um, we, uh, we had a farmers. The farmers are really interested in the area. They are very understanding. And these guys were in their 60s, and it's now 1967. And since you've been on TV for about six months, it's called Star Trek, the original episode. These old farmers were the hardest core trekkers you could ever meet. I couldn't believe it. And uh, anyhow, their four farms, like this big screen, if you made like a window pane, came in four sections. They put me dead center in it. So I was surrounded by private property in all 360-degree radius. Pretty good place to have it. Then they took a backhoe and dug out this big pit had a dirt ramp in there, and down this pit, I'm about 20 feet down, but about to height this wall. And the reason why, my engines didn't always work, y'all. They'd explode, and they can make a real mess. So um, I didn't want to hurt these cows. So we built that down, so I launch out like a silo. So um, I'm down in this pit. I'm working. And while I'm working on all these rockets, I look up, and completely around the circle of the pit is all these cows <laughs> and they're chewing away you know watch me do my thing they go that's cool you know they're watching so I look up it's like an OR room you know with an amphitheater I got all the uh, how y'all doing you know so I'm working on rockets they got to know me really well if I walked out of the pit slowly they'd all turn around and walk off if I come running out of the pit they all ran <laughs> so 
Hey, cows aren't dumb as you think they are. They're pretty, pretty smart animals. If that boy's running, leave, because there's going to be this big thing coming up out of there right after behind him. So they're used to seeing fireballs. So anyhow, I decided to, when I get ready to launch, I'd come out of the pit and I'd go to my launch booth area. They'd all move over and actually herd into a crowd. And when a rocket go out of there, I could look over and if I'd lose sight of it, I could watch where their heads are and pick up the sight. Because they'd all go like this. <laughs> 200 cows doing that. I got some pictures you wouldn't believe. Somebody go, how'd you get on cows to do that, you know? <laughs> My secret. So anyhow, I got to know these cows really well. And, um, pardon? Uh, yeah. I, if NASA loses tracking device, they need to get some cows out there. They'll find it. They, they got great eyesight. So uh, anyhow, they were pretty calm. So I tried a new rocket. This is a staging rocket, two stage. It has an engine on top and an engine on the bottom. All right? So this thing comes out of the pit, and it is just getting it. I mean, it's probably the fastest one I've built yet. When it gets right at the opening of the pit, which we call a bent horizon, it gets right at the opening, the second engine ignites. Both engines are now running. It blows the first stage back down to the pit and it explodes in a fireball that comes back up. This is all in a millionth of a second. It knocks the rocket over on its side, even with the ground. And it is skipping. And it is just, I mean, it is a streak with a fire tail about the size of a semi behind it. And it's heading dead center for this herd of cows. <laughs> and I'm standing there. It was the fastest prayer I ever got out in my life. Oh, God, save the cows, you know. No sooner I could get that spit out, boy, the thing just did a nosedive in the ground, and now it's shaking. Fuel tank rusher blows up. Huge fireball, size of a school bus. Blows up, and those cows are like from here to that wall. And I can look through the fireball, and I see, the, I'll see it right now, clear as ever. Their eyes, they're this big. <laughs> and I'm standing there like, what's next? You know, next... They did a perfect, just like in the Army, 180 degrees turn, all of them simultaneously. Boom, stampede. I thought, okay, good, they didn't get hurt. However, on a far side herd looking the other direction is this one cow that didn't see anything. So she disappears under the crowd. I went, oh, God. So I run over there. That cow is really bad looking. It's every bone, its body's broke, it's dead. It's just. So I'm sitting there going, oh, God, I've killed this cow. Well, here come all the tr farms and tra uh, trucks heading up there. It's the farmers. Of course, they saw this giant fireball, and it sounded like a clap of thunder on a clear day. Must be David. So they ran up there. First thing they said, you all right? Yeah, but I don't think this cow's too good. And they looked at that cow, and they go, that cow's dead. You know, I went, so they said, uh, go back to the, they sent somebody back with a front end loader and come back and pick this cow up. They said, you got to come back to the barn. I thought, oh, God, I've lost my launch area. I'll never get to use this site. And, oh, man. And they're going to be upset. So I get back there, and they take a chain hoist, put it around the cow's neck, and they hoist it up. And they tell me, well, normally we take these things to the slaughterhouse, but we don't have time because blood will coagulate in the meat, so we got to do this quick. And they said, um, you got to dress this cow. And I'm standing there, and I'm going, why would I want to put a dress on this cow? <laughs> Two of the farmers swallowed their plugs. <laughs> Tobacco. And they, they, are, they are laughing. And no sooner than I said that, I hear this thing behind me, ring, 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 and I turn around, and they hand me this chainsaw. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. Oh, God. And I had to cut this cow. I'm up to my shoulders in this thing, digging out everything. And I'm turning every color of the rainbow. And the guy comes by with amber in his mouth. You want a chaw? Oh, boy. They were having a great time. But the end of the story was, all right, this is a black Angus cow, about 900 pounds. Expensive animal. We ended up with a third of that cow for free in our freezer, and they didn't charge us anything. So my dad came home and goes, that's not a bad day's work. You brought home a third of a cow. 
I said, yeah, but I'll tell you what, I'll work all the overtime you want in that shop to buy you a steak because I am not going to dress another cow. <laughs> so anyhow, that's, that's pretty much how I endured life with cows out where I launch stuff. Now, back to current science here. But I thought you might appreciate that. Um, let's jump, and let's see, to the space station. Uh, does anybody know the name of the United States Space Station they're trying to get built? No? Freedom. Boy, you're doing better than the average audience. But there is another one. Yeah, well, this, it's not settled yet. Politics are still working on it. Yeah. The thing is, is the way they do the budgets. Uh, let's call it that. When we used to have the name up for freedom, the in-house, maybe they changed it because we made an in-house joke. They can't ever seem to get the budget funding on this thing, right? So we told them if we ever get free, uh, the station up, we'd have freedom at last. So but they, they may have changed it. I haven't been paying attention because I don't even talk to them. choke up every time I think about the space station. <coughs> um, let me tell you a story about funding with the space station. I was in an open hearing, this was 10 years ago, and they came in, NASA did, and they laid the budget in front of the Senate Subcommittee on Science and Technology, and they said that this space station would cost around 35 to 40 billion. Some of us come up out of our seats, but nobody wanted to say anything. When the actual GSA and the OMB audit came out on this thing, it's $180 billion. A little slight difference. So Congress doesn't believe anything NASA submits, so they get into a big tug of war, so they have to do an R&D study, and that's where it got to be fun. They came up with a final study in a prototype that sat in the corner of the room over there. It looks like a big, ugly erector set. And the bill was $2 billion for this study. And you end up with an eighth grade erector set design. You gotta be kidding. Well, anyway, they tore that up and started over again. And you're paying for this. And it's all in the congressional records. They still haven't really got the designs right. And uh, so the point to all this, is I'm not sure when we're going to get the station up. They keep giving you a timeline, they keep slipping back, 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 and you don't know what you're going to get. They keep redesigning, recutting. So for sake of argument, let's say that we're going to get something like this, which is called the string of link sausages design. <laughs> and that thing right there, that, lo that sausage link, is actually about the size of a single wide mobile home house trailer. So you pull it out and unscrew the caps, hook them together, the beam extender rolls out, put out your solar power blanket and you got enough power there to house about 24 people year round. And it would look like something like this. Most people see that and go, a space diner. No, that's, <laughs> that's not what it is. There's a space habitat module there and you have your supplies and avionics, life support systems on the upper and lower decks and then you have the space that you'd work in and here's where you'd have all the different stuff that you'd be working in and personal hygiene. And now they have a regular commode up there. That's important. You go to the bathroom, you're not going to use diapers now, would you? So, do you know anything? About